listening to the Mark Bradford Podcast. How would you like to show up for a date and a hundred other people did the same thing? Also, you're not tall enough. Hey there. So there's this video called The Tinder Trap, and it shows a woman who is an Instagram model and how she supposedly tricked literally hundreds of men to come see her in Union Square for their one-on-one date. Except it wasn't a one-on-one date. It was all 100-plus men showing up at the same time. Does that sound fun so far? Well, there's more. So she employed a number of foreign workers, cheap labor kind of stuff, to get them to flirt with these men because she didn't do this all herself at all. It was basically this cast of people doing it. In some of the, in some of the cases, I would assume it was actually men flirting with men under the pretense that it was her f- flirting with these men. So all these men show up at the same time. She shows up in a stretch limo and gets out, and she gets on a stage that's set up with microphones, speakers, and even bodyguards. They called this a social experiment to bring light on how things work on a dating site. Except it's not a social experiment, and it doesn't cast any light on how things work on a dating site. It sort of does the opposite. Why do I say that? Because she immediately starts to segment the men out. People that have taken the time to come down for their date. She sections off a huge amount of men, tells them to go home because they're not tall enough. She then goes through a bunch of other men and tells them why they're not good enough. And she even says if you have this first name, you should go as well because she doesn't like that first name. Now whether she really likes or dislikes that first name is, is up for discussion, but she still does it, and somebody with the first name who showed up now has to go home. And it's not like she said goodbye to these men in private. No, they learned when they showed up that everything that had been said in their flirting was essentially a lie and was essentially a ruse to get them to come there, and it wasn't even between them and this person. And then they're publicly humiliated. And again, she says this is a social experiment and it brings light on how people are treated on a dating site. Except it didn't bring any light on how people people are treated. It essentially just mistreated men in public and made fun of them. And it's not a social experiment because Granted, a social experiment isn't necessarily something that always has to have a positive outcome, but we kind of come to expect that, right? And I know expectations aren't really reality, but think about that. Every time you've seen a video with a social experiment, it's been how kind somebody is to the homeless or how, how it works if you, if you really just are a good person and wait till the end and see what this happens. Sure, granted, some social experiments show you how people are treated when they think there's no camera on, but we already know the ugliness of life. Right? If this was indeed a social experiment in the way that you and I come to appreciate them, I think it would have gone down like this. An attractive woman who really values something, one of her status items, right, is something that's kind of invisible. Things like intelligence, perception, uh, how good of a parent somebody is, how someone has integrity and does the right thing, how someone was, you know, such a fantastic person to their family to their to their mom who was sick or something like that things that that we really always think about and all these pretty posters talk about you know the, all the good that's in the world so she really likes a man that's like that and then a bunch of these supposedly arrogant guys show up and are tricked into showing up and she picks this normal looking every man and everybody claps and we go ah oh, look the non douchebag one yay just like in the movies right Well, it still wouldn't be a social experiment and a great video because we're still humiliating these guys who didn't ask to be humiliated. I mean, it's one thing, it's one thing to pull a whole bunch of men down and make fun of them. And then it's another thing to pull a few men down and make fun of them because they seem to be dicks. But making a video on it still is not totally cool. I I don't know. Maybe you'd like seeing that. Maybe you don't. Maybe you watch these gold digger videos, which... In the Status Game 2, there's a chapter called Gold Diggers, Sugar Daddies, Cougars, Oh My, and it actually explains that a bit more. So why don't I think it brought any light to a subject when I'm actually talking about it right now, right? I mean, isn't that what it was supposed to do? Well, not exactly. 
bringing light to something is raising awareness of it. And granted, I'm talking about it, and if you're listening, that means our awareness possibly has been raised of it. But mine didn't need any raising, and this isn't the kind of awareness I want to have raised. You don't raise awareness of animal abuse by bringing a bunch of dogs on stage and then kicking them and going, look, see how they're abused? I mean, I was actually a co-organizer and chair of an event that raised awareness for people in abusive relationships. And we didn't raise the awareness by bringing people into this event and punching them and degrading them. No, we provided information on it. We uh, had artists and, and the artists sold artwork to, to, to increase the, the funds that we donated to the causes. We, we, we showed them all the all the safe havens that you could go to and connected them with that. That's, that's what we did. That's what raising awareness is and that's what making connections like that is. I think raising awareness is what I do in the status game and the status game too where I explain how this all works with status and status items and how people are treated differently and how validation works. If you check out the article that I've written along with this podcast, you'll see I'm, I'm much more specific in it and you can go and see all the points and chapters that I'm talking about. If you already have a copy of the book on, on Kindle or physically, then you can just check the chapters and exactly what I'm talking about, including the glossary of terms, which I actually talk about in the article. But if you're just listening to the podcast, I think you still get the gist of validation and status items and so forth. So what was this? If it wasn't raising awareness, if it wasn't a social experiment? Well, I mean, in my humble opinion, I think it was kind of a grab for views. And, you know, a way to make someone a bit slightly more famous than they already were. At the expense of a lot of people who just wanted to have a date with someone they thought was attractive and someone they thought was engaging in some way on Tinder. Now, they actually say Tinder is bad. Is this kind of thing specific to Tinder? Well, no. I mean, even the website I built, Only a Glance, would have allowed her to sort of create this abusive environment for these guys with the caveat that my site actually only allows three outgoing connections so she'd only be able to reach out to three men but as many men as wanted to to reach into her would do that but if you look at tinder tinder actually has a rule that you can only swipe right meaning you like these people 100 times a day <laughs> 100 times a day i could only say wow that's a hundred women that i really would like to meet really i mean that's just never going to happen, first of all. And, and secondly, that rule doesn't apply to women. Now, why is that? Well, because men have adapted this attitude of let's just swipe right on everyone. And now we've gotten rid of a layer of complexity. Because now if all women that connect to me are free to connect back to me because I've said yes, now I can see which ones like me. Is that efficient? Sort of. Is it stupid? Well, yeah. Because now... You've totally messed up the whole status structure of the site. Now, women log in and they get 8 million likes. They are totally overwhelmed. They are totally misled into thinking what their status is <laughs> because 8 zillion guys like them when only 5 do. And um, kind of ruins it for everyone. And that's why I have an open letter to men in the status game called Dear Men and another letter called Dear Women. And it actually addresses that exact point. So if you indeed do watch the four minutes and 31 seconds of this fairly painful video, and I'd probably skip like halfway through it to get to the, the goodies, um, what's the lesson to learn here? And the lesson is that there's always going to be a seriously unbalanced power structure in online dating because of the way it works. Men are, by design, initiators. And when you put them in a system that limits their behavior, they find ways to adapt. They find ways around it, and the ways that they find around it kind of screw things up. And yes, there are playas out there. In, in fact, I have a chapter on that in the status game, too. Yes, there are people who are douchebags. I have a chapter on that as well. But a lot of people aren't. And I give people the benefit of the doubt that if they want to meet someone, they really want to meet them. You know, you could say, well, every single one of those men always only wanted to get jiggy with her. You know, that was the whole reason, and that's what Tinder is, it's a hookup site. But four out of five profiles that I see say, I'm not here for a hookup. They're basically using the site as a way to connect to people, not to have sex with them. 
so the lesson here is that if you want men to be more respectful and gentlemen, you have to treat them with respect. You can't create scenarios in which you openly abuse and laugh at them because they simply wanted to have a romantic connection with someone. Just because they're a guy doesn't mean they're a punching bag. And this respect starts in the mirror. So I guess I'm talking to you men. It would have been nice if every guy that showed up went, wait, this was a one-on-one -on -one date, see ya, and just left. But it didn't happen. So I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this. If you do watch the video and read my article, it would be interesting to, to see how you reacted to it. I'm always interested in that. So leave uh, some comments. Uh, check me out on Instagram. The comments on the actual video have been disabled, which is not a surprise, but you're welcome to comment to me so I can hear your thoughts. Thank you. Hey, it's Mark. Thanks for listening. As you've noticed, I'm starting to consolidate. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's author Mark Bradford. On Facebook, it's one Mark Bradford. Check out my books, The Status Game and The Status Game 2, and The Card Game all found at thestatusgame.com. I appreciate you listening, and if I can help you in some way, just let me know. See you next time.